like all the analysis, they create the same impact. When we analysed what had happened, there was still room to advance helmet performance further. This equipment is unique. The energy management here is unique. Everything is at a very, very high level. We at FA work together with the research team, with the industry, with the helmet manufacturers and with the laboratories. We target maximum safety. The objective is to reduce uh, the number of fatalities, zero fatalities. The safety is very important for the motorsport, uh, not only for Formula One. Maybe if it was a few years before, it would have been completely different. Carbon helmet uh, saved my life. FIA has two triggers to start the research, being proactive and being reactive. Being proactive means that we analyze the current products uh, to improve the safety requirements. Being reactive, that trigger happens every time that we analyze a fatal or a serial accident. Actually, I just finished my lap in the qualifying. I was in the in-lap. Uh, coming back to the to the garage, and uh, another car was uh, in front of me. It just lost the the spring, and the, the spring just uh, falls away from the car. It was uh, jumping on the asphalt. It came straight to my head. Uh, it was like a big impact. For the case of Philip Massa accident, we did a full scale constitution test. For each research project, we nominate a research manager, uh, which is responsible uh, for leading all the research work. And what, what was important in this accident was the, there's an area around the visor which isn't needed for the driver to see through, that they have sponsor decals in that area. This part of the helmet is the most critical area. If something is coming to your head, it will hit exactly on this area. So we immediately start working with the helmet uh, industry in order to come up with a solution. And we come up with a visor panel uh, which could be retrofitted into the current helmets. The visor material is actually about 10 times weaker than the very strong shell material that they have. Um, so there was a, an improvement opportunity there. We've done a military research establishment and the tests were very, very expensive. We developed a unique test procedure that is not uh, used in any other helmet standard. Our air cannon has been made to shoot this projectile in the shape of a coil, 6 mm radius, and we shoot it at a speed of 250 km per hour we can reach a massive energy impact, more than 500 Joule. We shoot against a sort of a ballistic pendulum, realized with an head form which has been instrumented with a three-axial accelerometer. We can measure the peak of the deceleration and the potential damage to the brain, measuring the hick. So that this is the area where the protection is limited by the, the thickness and strength of the polycarbonate material, uh, but it's not needed for visibility. So this is the helmet that I use this season. Uh, you have like a, a visor, and this visor, it was like a, a big uh, evolution that they made after my accident. This area now is very, very strong. This is a, a xylon carbon panel. Having developed this system, Immediately, we were then looking at how we could integrate the system into the helmet.
Working with uh, with the industry is quite a challenge. Uh, several times we may have different visions. Everybody disagree with yeah. this, yeah. but most yeah. probably yeah. all manufacturers yeah. are ready yeah. to, so to work just, on the yeah. subject yeah. and to cooperate. Around. We had tough discussions in order to ensure uh, that at the end we all agreed in the best way uh, to move forward and to deliver the safest product as possible. Yeah. You can have very difficult solution. Plan. You cannot compromise on safety yeah. for the wearer. That's why we came with this proposal, which is, I understand, tough because you need to make big design changes. Parco, are you happy that we put a definition like that? Do you agree, yes or no? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Stefan? Yeah, definition is fine. The question is what, we, what are we going to do with it afterwards, but definition we agree. Yeah. For sure, we want to, uh, to be sure that the helmet is still safe. We present the research during the research working group where we have safety experts coming from all around the world. And then we will begin by the first point of the item 3 regarding the helmet. It's very important uh, project for the safety. Two aspects of this. One is that the, the shell needs significant reinforcement to cope with this new test. And secondly, the, uh, the vision, the forward vision has changed um, because we're, we're bringing that point of the helmet lower. The work and we discuss the standards, safety standards, uh, during the equipment approval group, where we have representatives from all the manufacturers around the world, including as well laboratories. When you actually do this test, it's impressive because if you take a standard helmet and do this test, the projectile just goes straight through, hits the test head form and you see well over 1000 G and you can imagine the, the outcome. When this is working properly, we're seeing as low as 50 G on the driver's head. So obviously, if, if that had been Felipe's accident, he, you know, he wouldn't have even felt it, almost it. And based on that research, we created this draft standard. We really understand that what we are asking you, uh, it's a big step in relation to what we have today. We want to help you to achieve these targets during the production process as well. We present as well the final draft standard uh, to the Safety Commission, which is composed by presidents of different commissions. Today, this uh, additional visor is quite visible because it's on the on the, uh, uh, the additional protection is on the visor. Tomorrow, as it will be integrated into the shell, so it's not so obvious from outside to identify that's really the helmet with uh, the protection added. It might look like we have simply integrated a level of protection from the visor to the helmet itself. So it looks like the same protection, but it's not, because it means it's giving access to that protection to a lot more uh, drivers out there. The final regulation must be validated by the World Motorsport Council. The World Motorsport Council is the highest level of decision for motorsport around the world. Welcome to the President's Commission to attend the second part of the World Motorsport Council. In the dossier you have a proposal for a completely new FIA helmet standard. It will come and replace the highest helmet standards we have, so the one commonly used in our World Championships called 8860. It's, uh, it's nearly 10 years old. Uh, and it's going to be uh, uh, released uh, hopefully after this World Motorsport Council if you approve the uh, standard. So the World Motorsport Council, we publish the standard and then we start with the homologation process of new products. And then with the new helmet, you can now see that the visor aperture here is exactly matched with the opening we have here. And all of the reinforcement in this panel has now been integrated into the front of the helmet shell here. The, the way FIA and Global Institute are working is uh, something unique. It has given us uh, the possibility to have uh, access uh, to enormous competence uh, to produce uh, an helmet which is really the most advanced product. I think it's a, it's a really good job that FIA is doing for safety. So if you remember well, in the past, 
the races, the cars, the tracks. It was a lot more dangerous than how it is now. The, the drivers are a lot more safe when you're driving. It shows that the FIA took a completely different direction to improve the safety from the cars, to improve the safety from the tracks, from the circuits. We target maximum safety. That means zero fatalities. Our target is to develop the best products as possible and then back to track.